In the last episode, we talk about what you need to know to save your own life as a cruising yachty, with about two out of three yachties likely to be affected by this. We visit Rachel's bubble bath, we made a Zen statue, and we say goodbye to Jimmy and Wilma and wonder, will we ever see them again? In this week's episode, we get really bad news about our boat being on fire and then sinking. We suffer more emotional trauma as we've been made to be responsible for the cleanup despite being in Australia at the time. But what can we do? Hello everybody, this is um, a live update of what's currently happened. We need to give you an update about the situation that's happened in the last 48 hours. So for the last 48 hours we have had a significant issue develop and, and that's going to impact where we go from here. We wanted to share this with everybody because um, we have so many wonderful so much wonderful support out there and you know there's a bunch of you that just wait for the video to come out on a uh, you know Friday or, or whatever it is for you and it hasn't come out this week and we want to let you know why and um, fill you in on what's happened in the last 48 hours for us yeah so I mean obviously the backstory which if you're new to this channel we um, bought a Leopard 50 catamaran um, that's a long-term dream we fitted it out last year we went off and sailed the Caribbean for a season uh, we came back to Australia um, because of grandsons and the, the um, cyclone season. But as part of that dream, we wanted to use our skills as doctors and be able to deliver aid work yeah. for free wherever we went. So that was a really big part of, of what we were doing. So we're here in Australia. We had flights booked to, to go back to the boat in two weeks, 10 days time. We got a, we got a Facebook message audio at three o'clock in the morning. The phone went off and and this is a friend of ours in the US. But we were asleep, so... You we know, kind of woke up and thought, three o'clock in the morning, really, it's got to be a, a, a what do you call it, sometimes, pocket dial. Sometimes you do and, you know, you kind of just ignore it. And then I thought, well, if they ring back again, it's important and I'll answer it. So, and she did, she phoned back and it was a very dear friend of ours. And uh, her words to me were, Ellie, I'm so sorry, but... I'm standing here watching Ultra Dash burn and Ultra Dash was on fire and I mean I, I could hear people screaming you know I could hear people screaming in the background we could hear the we could the hear fire. the we could hear the fire and whew. and she was trying to condone the condole Condole us? Is she, that the right word? She was she was trying to console us. Console. <laughs> she was trying to console us and kept on saying, you know, Ellie, I'm so sorry. Um. And we could hear. So I mean, at the same time, there was um, screaming and panic from the people who had the house right next door to the water at the Dania Canal. Um, this lady was fearful for the life of her cat. I mean, obviously she talked to us for five minutes or 10 minutes or so. And it would have been a really, excuse me. It would have been really hard for her to do um, and we really appreciate it very much. So she was obviously just, she was doing it for us. And we had to know, but, um, Obviously the call ended and then, and then, then we we're in shock. Um, so as she sent us a picture of the boat. Um, she told us not to look at it. <laughs> as I said, of course you got to look at it. We needed to, we needed to. Know what we're dealing with. Yeah, know what we're dealing with and, and also to, to get it into our heads that, you know. It's real. The fire was so huge that it then uh, set a, a light the boat in front of um, Ultra Dash, which was a Leopard 45. 
and then that boat started to burn as well so you had two boats burning fear, uh, fiercely phenomenal um, ultra dash floated out um, towards the middle of the canal so as you can imagine because in in the mooring lines burned so yeah. then it was not attached there was a bit of wind that day after weeks and weeks of completely no calm wind. weather <laughs> so obviously the winds also fanning the flames and and there's also other mega yachts in the close vicinity houses 10 meters 10 yards away from where the boats were moored as well so there, this was a, could have been a catastrophe uh, it was in uh, potentially even much bigger catastrophe than it ultimately turned into mm. um, so I guess um, there's a bit of twofold here. We wanted to, you know, let everybody know, you know, why we didn't get the video out, and also the fact that if this ever happens to you, there's some things that we really, we really didn't know that would happen or expect. So John's gonna kind of run through a few things like that, well, like the legal side of it, <clears throat> because when something like this happens, you you don't. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, me. I mean, I mean, there's several sides to this whole problem that we are experiencing, which is very interesting. There has to be some good out of catastrophes. Three o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter. You're gonna, you can't go back to sleep. So we sat and talked, trying to process and, and deal with, come to terms with what does this actually mean? And obviously the first thing is, oh, well, thank God, you know, the boat's insured. Our whole life is on that boat. All of our good clothing that we wear on a regular basis is there. All the wonderful bikinis that Ellie was wearing. And I looked amazing <laughs> in those bikinis, I tell you. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, our computers, our databases, camera gear. Um, camera gear that we don't. So we brought our mobile camera gear with us back yeah. to Australia. Yeah. We didn't bring it all. So there's a whole heap of camera gear that's gone up in smoke. Uh, we had a friend's hooker and dive. She doesn't know about that yet. Dive gear on the boat. I'm so sorry, Annie. Yeah, there was a whole lot of other gear on the boat as well that was put on the boat after the insurance was taken out. For example, the you know nine or ten thousand dollar compressor a lot of our dive gear and fishing gear. At the end of the day, what we had to say to ourselves is, it's just a boat. That was the very first thing. It's just a boat, don't, it's not, it's a, not person. a person. We're both safe. Don't, I could feel Elizabeth's <laughs> bereavement process like as if it was a person. Well, I guess, I guess what it was for us, it, it wasn't, just a boat, it was what it represented, you know. Okay. So that's different, that's our dream and our life. Yeah, yeah. So this situation is the destruction of this long-term plan and long-term dream. Obviously lots and lots of effort, both in going to generate the income to buy the boat. The ultra dash and the dream was the... The thing that kept driving us forward. Yeah, and no matter what, we were, we're almost there. Come on, we can do this, you know. And I mean, it was really, I mean, we worked six or seven days a week, 24-7. Um, you know, we got calls in the middle of the night, etc., etc. So, like, this isn't, this is was not an easy journey and we worked really hard for it and, and we can put our hands on our heart and say we deserve the, the what we achieved with the boat and now it's gone so i mean how awful is that so it took two years roughly to build and three or four months to fit out so you know very conscious of we wanted to retire as early as possible so that we can enjoy our health we can enjoy our, our our fitness at the age we were the longer you leave these things you know Age. It gets harder to yeah, do does, certain things. It, you know, it does. So we're very conscious of that, and we thought, yes, you know, you know, we've we've got the boat. Okay, we've we've done it. We've ticked all the boxes, and we actually did what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. We we sold the businesses. We took we a bit longer than got our boat. boat, and we sailed off. We did a season. We delivered aid from the back of the boat, which is what really brought us a lot of joy. And it was a platform for us, um, you know. We need to tell you the story of what's happened in this last 48 hours. So we got that call at 3.30 in the morning, or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, we lay awake trying to process this information and, and understand what it means. So loss of the boat, loss of the dream. What do we do? We have flights in 10 days. All this is organized. You know, our flights are probably non-refundable. Do we go anyway? Do we not go anyway? And so there was all this stuff going on and what did we have to do? Okay, so 
I have to inform the insurance company. I phoned the insurance agent to find out what I do should do and he said, send me an email. So I sent him an email. Mm -hmm. So even if we'd wanted to go to sleep, we wouldn't have been able to because every half an hour or so, we got a call from somebody else who was involved with a boat in some ways. Isabel from Leopard Catamarans called to, again, like... Yeah, the, <laughs> It was very lovely. It was. Very lovely. It's very hard to, to phone up somebody and say somebody's died or give somebody really bad news. So all of the people that called us, we're very grateful that you had the courage to do that. So we thank you very much for that. Yeah. So they called, uh, Rafa from Just Catamarans called, a lot of our other people called. At about four o'clock Florida time, 4 p.m. Florida time, which is 6, 6 a.m. our time, that's when we started getting aggravation about legal liability. It was bad enough dealing with the loss of your boat and your dream and all your personal effects. Now we got we got started getting hammered and, and what follows is actually probably even worse than the, the loss of the boat. There was two salvage companies that were aggressively pushing to get the salvage rights on the boat. We got emailed a salvage contract, which was basically open slather to charge us whatever they wanted. And they were forcing, they were trying to force us to, to agree to the salvage immediately. Get advice from your insurance before you sign forms, because some of these forms are so open slather that the salvers or the people salvaging the boat can have complete rights over your boat. So I emailed, these contracts and this information off to the insurer. So I so I thought, well, we'll wait till tomorrow. Now this is the start of our day in Australia. So we're then, I shouldn't say awake, but we had commitments. There were, there were things that were, that day was actually a very big day for us because we were doing a major presentation to um, a mining, a, a group of mining companies about mental health, ironically. And so, so we had to do the final preparation and go and present, having had no sleep. <laughs> You know, I mean, so this is, that was, uh, undoubtedly, that was the biggest presentation we've ever done. And we had to go to it in this state of mind, having had th three or four hours sleep only. So half of our night and stressed and really our brains weren't devastated. <laughs> we were devastated. <laughs> so not only were we sleep deprived, but we were not focused on the, uh, the, the work we had to do. And we were very distracted. But, but, you know, we, 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 we got there. We got there and, and that's what we've been getting. Repeated calls from contractors, salvaged com contractors, and then... The Coast Guard. And then the Coast Guard. So, Tell us uh, about the Coast Guard, honey. So, um, at 8 p.m. that night, so this is four or five hours after the event, I got an email from the Miami IMD, whatever the Miami IMD is, but this is something to do with the um, Homeland Security, US Coast Guard, notice of federal interest, blah, 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 50 foot leopard catamaran cut off canal. This letter is to make you aware of your ongoing obligations under the law, honor that the 50 foot catamaran, a pollution incident occurred and threatens to occur at Dania cut off canal. Blah, 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 as the potential responsible party you may be financially liable for this incident and are required to carry out immediate and effective removal and or remediation actions. Failure to do so may result in a penalty of up to $48,192 per day or up to three times the cost incurred and a fine of up to $58,328 per okay. day and punitive damages not to exceed three times the cost incurred by hazardous substance control. So I would say this this is kind of like adding insult to injury. <laughs> or, you know. So now, I mean, this is 8 p.m. Florida time. I can't do anything with this anyway because everybody's closed. This is the beginning of our day when we're gonna present, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and, we got, and there's potential fines of $100,000 per day. This isn't our fault. You know, we, it wasn't our fault um, that the boat went up in flames and this is like and how am I meant to fix it from Australia when everybody else is asleep over there I must say this was the start of a very difficult 
aggravation to the whole bad situation. So the next morning, 8 a.m. Florida time, I'd already sent off all the emails. This is 10 p.m. our time. Um, and after that, I had continuous calls from multiple people, direct calls from the Coast Guard, and they were actually, the particular individual in charge was very good and, and helpful to explain to me why I was responsible for a fire that I didn't Stop. start or be responsible for. But what they do is that their process is to just say, we don't know whose fault it is. We need we make the boat owner responsible and then they can deal with the, the levels of responsibility through the legal process, through the insurance companies subsequently. So I am responsible, even though I'm in Australia and I had nothing to do with the whole thing. If you're a justice freak, you think, this is so unfair. So unfair. My God, I had nothing to do with it. Don't blame me. I wasn't there. But anyway, that's the way it is. Uh, the other challenge we had that morning, unfortunately, was we weren't getting any response from our insurance agent. 9.30 a.m. Florida time, after the discussions with the Coast Guard, they said, we are going to send you an administrative order, which makes you, forces me as the owner to put things in place in certain time frames. So by midday, two and a half hours later, I had to have a contract signed with the salvage operator and they had to create a plan to solve the problem. You know, where do you start? I have no idea where do we go to do this and how do we do it? And two and a half hours to get a quote and sign a contract. One of the early emails that I got from the day before when I sent the contract of salvage, the original contract of salvage, my insurance agent said, do not sign this form because that makes you liable for, you know, unlimited liability for absolutely everything and they could charge you whatever they want. So do not sign this form. So we were calling the agent and send, I sent several emails and multiple calls and nothing happened and the, the deadline was getting closer and closer. I had for, further con conversations with the Coast Guard, um, senior guy in the Coast Guard, and he said, if you don't sign that, then it's handed over to the federal department who organizes the cleanup, but I will be charged those fees. And those fees, when it's done in that way, are usually double or triple the... Well, the form said three times the amount. Yeah, uh, three, times the, three <laughs> times the cost or something like that. Clearly, I was wanting to limit liability, whether it's for me or for my insurance company. Ninth, after I got that administrative order, which clearly states these things have to be in place by a certain time and action needs to be taken by the following morning and all this sort of stuff, I thought, I have no idea what to do here. So is this contract that the um, salvage people are giving me valid and, and protects me enough or is it just all in their favor? What do I do? Is it better that I don't sign it? Is it, and it goes to the federal department. I mean, it's so hard because I had to have this signed by midday. And by this stage, you know, I was still on the phone discussing this contract with the towboat company up to about quarter to 12. So all of that will be very interesting. It will. So we'll keep you up to date. We will. And lots of lessons to learn, I think. Yep. Um, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, hit the like button because yeah. this was such an incredibly wonderful and happy video. <laughs> but it was a very important one and it, we needed to share it. And okay, guys. Thanks very much. And the next video will be out to give you updates on how this is all going. So thanks a lot and we'll see you later. Thanks for your support. Bye. If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and health from the Barefoot Doctors.